which helps explain why officials in Moscow are so agitated by the impact of sanctions and have warned the people of Lithuania to expect retaliation for their government's actions. This example shows that you cannot trust either verbal statements by the West or written ones. Russia will certainly respond to such hostile actions. Appropriate measures are being worked out between departments and will be taken in the near future. Their consequences will have a serious negative impact on the population of Lithuania. It's a threat some Lithuanians have long anticipated. Baltic countries, differently from many other countries of European Union, didn't have any illusions about the true uh, attempts and ideas of Russia. A threat to one or all of the Baltic states would constitute a threat to NATO. Many in the Atlantic Alliance maintain an armed presence there. This was the German Chancellor visiting his country's soldiers in Lithuania just two weeks ago. Like many other European leaders, Olaf Scholz says his country will defend every centimeter of NATO territory. Dominic Kane, Al Jazeera, Berlin. Joining us now from Brussels is Rasa Yuknyavichana, who's a member of the European Parliament and was Lithuania's defense minister. Uh, it's good to have you with us. Um, what do you make of, of Russia's Hello. statements, that any measures Russia takes would harm the population of, of Lithuania? Is that a threat? First of all, uh, Lithuania uh, is not applying any national unilateral uh, restrictions. And uh, um, its uh, transit is going and not uh, yet been not stopped or banned, not at all. Uh, passengers are going as they were going and goods only uh, sanctions were implemented, fourth package of sanctions in March. And now it's time, came time uh, for uh, um, implementation. Uh, Russia knew everything in advance and only steel and iron is uh, not allowed to go through. Uh, I see this situation uh, as uh, more as uh, Kremlin information, information attack. Uh, what they are doing, used to do all the time, and now they are doing, maybe because uh, important uh, EU and NATO summits are coming. They are trying to threaten all of us, not only Lithuania, but uh, these two uh, important uh, alliances. Uh, because uh, they think that uh, uh, somebody will be afraid, scared. They think that uh, maybe because of that, uh, somebody will uh, think that uh, it's, uh, they will stop uh, uh, support for Ukraine. Or, or maybe they are thinking about uh, some kind of black scenario, some kind of de-escalation of the war in Ukraine, trying to use this, these escalations or threatening threatenings uh, by trying, as they already okay. mentioned, uh, to, to uh, have uh, everybody to be scared. All right, so your argument is that, that Russia is making noise here. Uh, but if it, if it came to any kind of military action, uh, against uh, Lithuania. Are you confident that as a NATO member, the alliance would come to Lithuania's aid? Of course, of course, because if not, so then it will be no NATO at all. Uh, of course, Russia is trying to test NATO, to test the other alliances. Uh, but uh, today, you know, uh, they know very well themselves who they are. Uh, Kaliningrad region is now uh, less um, deployments are with military personnel are less than it was before the war against Ukraine because they need uh, personnel, military personnel in Ukraine. So we know this. Uh, also, we know that uh, there are no nothing, no new movements, military movements around. Up to now, up to this moment, I speak with you. It is uh, noise. It is uh, information attack. Because uh, yesterday, today, many uh, media outlets informed that Lithu Lithuania blocked somehow uh, this transit is not true. So this is this is what uh, uh, Russia used to do and is doing all the time with information warfare, lies, and 
and maybe for domestic affairs as well. But, uh, all right, Lithuania is a part of the EU. These are EU sanctions. One has to wonder, though, why tiny Lithuania would be doing this at, at the behest of, uh, of the EU. It's, it's, it's kind of poking a bear with a stick, isn't it? Asking for trouble. But we are not doing ourselves. It is agreement of uh, uh, 27 uh, countries in, in, in one voice was adopted sanctions uh, 15th of March, fourth package, later fifth package, sixth package. So we are part of European Union and of course uh, Russia has to be punished. Uh, with sanctions because of the war they launched, brutal, bloody war. They are killing people. So it's, uh, it's, uh, they, they, they can immediately solve this problem with sanctions and with the, uh, with the transit as well, uh, if, if they will stop this war. So everybody asks them to stop this war. It's been really good to talk to you. Many thanks indeed uh, for being with us. Much appreciated. Rasa Yuknyavichyana uh, there in Brussels. Russia's president says that he's planning to fully modernize the military. Vladimir, Vladimir Putin says it's in response to growing threats from outside the country. The plans include making Russia's ground troops more combat effective for future conflict, conflicts. We will continue to develop and strengthen our armed forces, taking into account potential military threats and risks based on the lessons of modern armed conflicts. A priority is equipping troops with new weapon systems that will determine the combat effectiveness of the army and navy in the years and decades to come. In addition to the new weapons already tested, troops are receiving S-500 air defense and missile defense systems that are unmatched in the world. In Ukraine, a school in the east Eastern Donetsk region has been hit by Russian shelling. A regional governor released this footage showing the building in flames in the city of Avdivka. It's one of about a, a 200 schools destroyed across the Donetsk region. There's been fierce fighting for several weeks as Russian and Ukrainian forces battle for control of the east. Well, the situation